Hey everyone, Charlie here. This is uh, episode two of making one-off fiberglass parts. I uh, got some materials here I wanted to go over with you before we proceed on to the FJ doing the uh, one-off part that I'm working on. Um, here I have some epoxy and polyester resins. This is a uh, polyester resin, which is a marine grade. It uses uh, MEK as its catalyst. And usually if you buy it in a gallon or quart kits, it'll always come with the MEK. Um, here is, I'm, I do uh, fiberglass work on the side. So I have uh, more professional equipment. So I have, this is a, a squeeze bottle that holds nothing but catalyst and it has a uh, uh, incremental measuring tool that's incorporated into it. So I'm able to squeeze the bottle and it measures up my CC for depending on how much material I'm going to use. Um, the nice thing is, is if you research and you look at some of these, they're, they're bought at uh, marine stores um, or eBay. Um, look for one if you're unfamiliar on, and want to study on how to mix this stuff. They usually have a scale on here that'll tell you in percentages and for the amount of or volume of material that you're going to use, such as pint, quart, gallon, etc. So um, the, the percentages will alter your uh, cure time or pot life of the material. Being in my shop in this time of year is about 65 degrees. So I tend to uh, move to the uh, lower to mid range, uh, basically 1% on the material or the catalyst to uh, my mix ratio. Um, during the summertime when it's usually 85 to 100 degrees in here, I usually run the three quarter percent or lower. Um, to uh, allow a longer uh, pot life of the material. Um, this would be epoxy. Epoxy is always a two part. It's usually mixed like one to one or one to 1.5. They'll usually tell you on here that the mixing instructions generally on epoxy. Um, the difference between the two is that basically they're not compatible. You can make them bond to each other, but they're not naturally bonded. Um, where the polyester resin, which is what I work with mostly, I use very little epoxy in my shop. But when you're going to use uh, polyester resin, you can have a little more fudge factor, I like to say, as far as the amount of uh, catalyst to the uh, amount of uh, resin material. Um, too little extends your, uh, your cure times. So you could have a much longer cure time. If you mix way too little, then you could potentially have where it doesn't want to cure. Um, or if you put too much, you can make it get too hot. So you have a really low pot life of the material. And if you mix way, way too much, you can actually cause it to start smoking. Once it, it'll, it'll cure really fast it'll, and uh, you can start smoking, it'll start bubbling, it can crack um, as far as in your container. Um, I've, I've tried to overmix this stuff, see if I could catch it on fire. It will not catch on fire, but it will smoke really heavily if it's uh, mixed pretty heavy. Epoxy is a totally different animal. You have to mix these at the correct measurement. Too much of one and not enough of the other can totally affect how this material um, does cure. Generally, what I find is when they're mixed in, in you know, incorrectly is that the, the uh, epoxy turns rubbery or it stays sticky. It'll never cure. It'll always be that kind of consistency. Uh, where sometimes with polyester, you could, if you mixed it under amount and you find that it's still a little rubbery, you know, you can put it in the sun, um, a little heat, and it'll actually finish curing it off. Epoxy is totally different and you'll never get away from that. So I don't use it very much in my shop. Not that I don't know how to use it. I've used it multiple times but I just don't use it because of my side business. I keep plenty of polyester resin in stock. By the way, this is a marine grade. There's a ton of different great, uh, type of materials out there, but I find they're pretty close to the same. Most of the time, it's just some kind of UV protection that you're not going to see in the first place because you're gonna have paint over your parts. I use uh, pretty much anything. Um, this is a two liter soda bottle. I cut the top off. Um, I mix my materials in here and then I throw it away. So I get a second use out of the soda bottle. The next is I use these kind of paper cups. I buy them in bulk and the paper cups that I use do not have wax in them. 
So do not get cups with wax because when you're mixing your materials in it and you're scraping your stir stick in here, you can scrape the wax off and impregnate the material or, or contaminate it. And so when you go to apply it to your uh, part that you're trying to make, you can have wax particles in there, which you know that wax will repel any kind of paints or anything like that. So you can get fish eyes, a lot of other bad things. So stay away either you use plastic or paper cups that do not have wax in it. When they have wax in them, they're very obvious that they have wax. Most of the time they'll have like a plastic coating in there, which is fine. Just stay away from wax. Um, usually what I use for applicators, I use these disposable chip brushes. You can get them in one inch, two inch, three inch. I use two inch as my common size. I get these at Harbor Freight by the box. And when I'm, if they're one use, I throw them away and we move on. Uh, materials for cleanup is acetone. You'll need acetone to clean up any spills, um, clean up any of your tools that you may use. Um, and I have different tools for that, so we'll, we'll cover those. So acetone's important. Your fabrics that you use, this is a, a woven cloth. I believe this is like three quarter ounce. Um, this would be more common to use if you're gonna use epoxy. So when you're gonna use, if you're gonna use epoxy, make sure you research which materials are compatible with your epoxy because not all materials are compatible with epoxy. Uh, this is another cloth that we use. This is called matte. Um, you can, you, uh, when it comes in a roll like this, or small roll, it's usually referred to as tape. I use the one and a half ounce uh, mat, and this is not compatible with epoxy. Um, what I mean by not compatible is that this stuff has got strands on it, and then they use a binder, a glue type of glue in here to hold the strands all in one place. And that glue is designed to dissolve with polyester resin. It does not, it's not designed to dissolve with epoxy. So you'll have a problem with getting saturation into your part. So you'll want to, you'll most likely be using uh, a cloth. I like matte because I find matte to be a much stronger material because you have multiple uh, directions that the, the, the grain of the material is going. So you, you generally get a much more rigid part. Uh, where this, you, ha you have two different directions, up and down and left and right, and you have to stagger and uh, you know, change the rotation of your material to try to achieve a much stronger part. Um, but you can produce a lighter part with the, the cloth versus the mat. Um, other materials I use, I use these to make uh, 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 putties uh, out of polyester resin. So basically like body filler, but in a more of a marine or fiberglass fashion. This is called Cabasil. It's a, a very, very, very light powder. So do not eat, work with this stuff in the wind. And if you do, make sure you got some kind of uh, breathing protection on because this is very, very micro particles. They float in the air. Um, this is another material. Um, this is uh, uh, called milled fibers. It's basically fiberglass material that's been ground up into a powder. Um, and this is referred to as 132nd powder. Um, and I usually use these two in conjunction. This makes a nice putty, but it has no, no strength, um, no binder, basically. And then I use this as my binder in there to give, this, uh, give the two together as strength. Um, some of the other tools that I have, uh, being that I do this a little more professionally, these are called bubble rollers. I use this jug when I do my uh, work that I pour acetone in there so I can clean my tools when I'm done. Bubble rollers are, they come in different types. This is like a corner roller. Um, this is for doing smaller uh, like corners, etc. This is my most favorite one I use. Um, I bought this is a, an economy uh, bubble roller. I bought this in 1996, so it's still going. Um, and this is a three quarter inch bubble roller. It's basically like a nylon type roller. And what it does is when you saturate your material, you run this over the top and these grooves that are cut in it, as you can see, those help work the bubbles out of the material. If you don't work the bubbles out of your material, you'll have voids, uh, weak spots. If you go to start sanding, you'll see your bubbles or your voids come uh, to be a problem. So. Uh, bubble rollers are really nice when it comes to either doing epoxy or polyester resins. So you don't have to invest in tons of tools, but at least get yourself one of them um, so that you can be able to roll the bubbles out. 
Um, this is a homemade tool. I use this for really, really tight corners, things that I can't get these bubble rollers in so I can try to manually work the bubbles out. Uh, so this is just uh, a generic tool that I've made. Now that we went through this, um, we'll pause a bit. You'll be on here in a second and we'll kind of go over um, how to do the uh, FJ project for the uh, seat cowl. So that's it. Back. All right, I showed in, in video one how we had that clumped on there and I wanted to show you kind of how rough it was done. This is with that expanding foam. You can probably see a little bit of a hint but that my battery's underneath. Like, as I said in the first video, I wanted this to be very compact. Um, as you can see, the, the surface finish on this is very poor actually, um, but it's not really going to matter. And I'll show you the tricks of what we're gonna do. Basically, I'm going to wrap this complete with the cellophane wrap that's on here, and that will help cover up these holes and provide a little bit of structure to it. And then of course, I'm going to put the tape over it so I just wanted to show you a video of what this looks like, and then we'll move forward with completing, prepping to uh, make this with some fiberglass. So stand by. Hey everyone, we're back. All right, we're got, I went ahead and prepped my materials. So I have my one and a half ounce mat already pre-cut to how I'm gonna lay it on his part. Um, I'm doing three layers of one and a half ounce mat. That gives me plenty of room to sand and take out any imperfections. Um, the links are going this way across here and then I've created the end cap. It's already pre-cut. And when you do end caps, it's got to do a bend. You want to at least have about one to one and a half inches of wrap onto the other surface. And to help achieve that better, I've created cuts all the way around and you'll want to do these cuts so that when you put it on here you're able to to fold the material over as you lay your resin on here so i'm going to go ahead and wrap my plastic on here uh, and then i will apply my tape my masking my clear packaging tape that was described in, in uh, episode one go ahead and get this thing completely sealed and get it ready and we'll start doing some resin so further ado just wait a minute and we'll be back all right everyone welcome back um, i have wrapped the uh, sea cow foam with the uh, cellophane wrap I use it for moving and then i've applied the uh, clear packing tape over overlapping the tape um, as you can see the uh, potentially as you can see um, all this, the surface imperfections are completely uh, taken away by the, the wrap and the tape because you're not applying a traumatic amount of force when you're applying the resin and this is going to assume its natural shape because, and the weight of the material is negligible with trying to press onto it. Um, so here it is wrapped. Um, I'm probably going to mix the material and I'm going to apply it. Um, in the interest of saving my battery on my uh, GoPro, um, I will go ahead and start laying this material up and then we'll, uh, we'll come back. I'll show you what it's like um, as a close up, give you a more little detailed explanation on what I did and then we'll kind of go from there, let it cure and then we'll come back again from that video and show you what it looks like when it's cured. And that's it. Hey everybody. Um, you know, having a how-to video, at least I needed to be able to show putting some layers on here. I've already applied the first two layers on here and I was saving the final layer to kind of give you an idea um, on the layup. When you're laying this stuff up, don't worry about it being looking all pretty and you may see sporadic air bubbles or maybe a couple little dry spots and you'll be able to know a dry spot from any other thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to whip this out so you can kind of see how I just basically slather the, the resin on here. Uh, we'll start with the end cap. We stick that on here. And being that I already have the first layer, the extra layers that go on afterwards go on very easy because you have pre-saturated material on there. So basically all you're doing is working the resin in. And like I said, pretty is not, so don't get freaked out or scared 
because you're not getting a uh, perfect layout um, or it's not working right. Um, it takes a little bit of time for the resin to saturate out and to uh, uh, dissolve the glues that's used or the binders that used to hold this matting together. Um, you just keep flattening it out. And as you can see, the cutout fingers made it nice to form around the arch of this hump. So basically all I'm doing is just feathering in the resin behind it and you just come in, uh, you're gonna get this stuff all over the place, so make sure you cover anything you don't want resin to be thrown on. Um, I have ventilation opened up, so it would keep the smell. So if you're doing this in your own garage attached to your house, um, you better do it when the wife is away because this stuff will make your house smell. Um, I have uh, an external, external workshop, so I don't have to worry about the misses. Um, but if you do not um, pay close attention on, on laying this up so that you don't uh, make your house smell because um, it will smell for hours um, and potentially a half a day or longer. Um, so uh, do this with that kind of caution. So as I get, begin to continue to apply this on here, as you can see, I'm just kind of like slathering it on and hopefully in the video you'll be able to see how the resin just uh, just picks up and saturates fairly quickly. You can probably see a couple little air bubbles, but don't worry about that. That's what the bubble roller is for, um, and it will smooth it out a lot. Um, and it'll make it nice, pretty, uniform. Um, there may be some ray spots because I overlap my material sometimes uh, to make a stronger joint. Um, but in the most part, this is a matting material. And as you're dragging it on, you can actually see the material being dragged and moved. So I'm, I'm actually meshing the two individual pieces simply just by applying the resin on here. So you just continue to apply. And like I said, this is the, the third and final layer that's being applied to this. Um, there will probably be additional procedures to whatever I'm going to do. Um, for fitting it up against the frame, uh, forming it around the light a little bit more. Um, but those are easy additions, and if that is required of this particular component, which it most likely will, I will make another video and show you how that I'm, I achieve those kind of functions. Uh, because you can, the polyesters, you can continuously apply even after it's dry, generally you have to rough the surface up with some sandpaper, etc. Um, and uh, just start applying your next layer. All right, so now everything looks like it's good and coated. Um, we're going to go ahead and start our bubble rolling. So you see, it doesn't look very pretty. I have mixed a little extra on the resin here. Uh, but anyways, that's that. I'm going to use my trusty 20 something year old brush. I'm pretty good in some acetone to make sure that it's uh, good and free and rolls good. So when you do rolling, bubble rolling, you're, um, I would like to see if I can get the video on here. Let me take my glove off so I can hold the camera. So, bring it in here, um, and you'll see the bubbles as I'm rolling them out. So what we're trying to do here is slowly work the bubbles out. Sometimes you got to go multiple directions or back and forth strokes, and you can see that it really smooths the part out really nicely with doing that it causes everything to blend in very good and you're doing this through the whole thing removing the bubbles adds strength um, having bubbles or voids in it reduces its strength it also uh, when you do any kind of deep sanding you have to fill those voids afterwards with a different type of material body filler etc and as you see i'm slowly just pulling these bubbles out and the surface is smoothing up very, very nicely. Um, 
what we'll do is it takes a little bit of practice so like I said don't get scared when you're laying out your material that everything's not looking like it's flowing great you know as you just keep laying it and then as you get the material on it'll just start naturally wanting to form because you have saturated and dissolved all the glues that's holding the mat and as you can see it's very nice the uh, surface is very clean so we come through here um, I generally lay this front face piece first simply because the fingers can be put underneath the uh, the residual layers from the outside um, so all we're doing here is just working out the air bubbles um, and smoothing it out, taking any of the fur or I guess you could say little spikes. Um, so some things can be a little bit more tricky to get out. I'm trying to get that little wrinkle out of there. And there we go. There we go. And then we'll work this out. And as you can see, it's very clean. So, all we're doing is uh, just basically smoothing it out the best we can. And like I said, this is only the beginning for this cowl. This cowl will get some later work done to it, um, how it's gonna form underneath, um, how it'll curve underneath where the uh, meets the tail light, and so on. So anyways, I'm gonna pause this video and then we'll touch base here shortly. All right, that's it. Um, as you've seen from the close up, it's basically how you lay the material on. So when you lay your first layer, that's generally the hardest one to start. When you start applying it, you're trying to saturate the material and get it to stick to a, a surface that's trying to get written into it to remove it. You know, the wax is, is not willing to accept it, so you're having to get that on there. And once you get it all saturated, you get your first layer on, you're golden at that point. Your second and repetitive layers go on much easier because your backing surface of your, your uh, following layer is already saturated and it, uh, it allows saturation from the bottom of your new piece as well as you applying resin to the top and then fourth you just walk it out. I said do not panic or worry about inconsistencies or air bubbles or fur sticking out. You know, just lay your resin in it, get it saturated and the bubble roller will do all the magic for you. That's what bubble roller is key um, to making a really good smooth finish. As you can see, you've seen from the video when I shot it from the side and top view, the surface is not like